welcome to another episode of D&D's Nolzer's Marvelous Tutorials with Realm Smith. I am Jason Azevedo, your host for this evening. Um, we have a last minute crazy change. You're expecting the Shambling Mound tonight. Uh, instead, uh, and because I realized, uh, at, but just as I was about to sit down to paint, that we actually don't have Shambling Mound in stock here in the studio. Um, and I was like, oh no, because it's at our warehouse anyways. Unfortunately, that is not what we're doing, but what we are doing is a crazy elemental um, what, uh, gauntlet of sorts. I don't even know what to call it. We're going to do four elementals tonight in two hours to prove to everyone how quickly you can uh, paint up miniatures. So we'll go through announcements really quick before we jump in, and then we'll jump right into it. Uh, I want to thank, of course, D&D for hosting us this evening. I uh, want to thank uh, WizKids, of course, for giving us all these incredible minis that we paint uh, every week. Um, and obviously Vallejo for the awesome paints that we use uh, that they provide and formulate and create for us. So those of you that are going to be at PAX Unplugged, that is in less than two weeks, we are holding master classes every day of the show in the Vallejo booth. You can check us out. I think it's TT08 is the booth number. And then Realmsmith also has a booth, TT09. Come check us out. Sign up for the classes. Just show up at 10 o'clock when the doors open to the exhibit hall. Uh, come to the Vallejo booth and sign up for that day. And then you can do that every day after that. So please uh, sign up, show up, and it's going to be a blast. We'll see you at PAX. Uh, can't wait. I'm going to be an, uh, announcing and releasing the schedule for December this week for the next four minis that we'll do in December. The Shambling Mound will be in that. We're actually doing that at PAX. So uh, for one of the weeks during the holidays that we won't be doing a live show, I'll make sure to post that PAX episode uh, so that you guys can uh, get the Shambling Mound goodness. Um, and that's pretty much it. Other than that, obviously, paint nights from WizKids and Vallejo. Check your local stores. Uh, we're doing uh, sponsored paint nights by WizKids and Vallejo uh, across North America following our tutorial. So keep an eye out and an ear out in your local stores because we're uh, rolling out a new one soon. I don't think it's been announced soon uh, or yet, but it will be announced soon. Uh, also, we have some incredible minis coming in the next wave of paint classes and tutorials. Um, which I won't talk about now because I'm not allowed to, uh, but uh, stay tuned because Wave 12 is coming and there's some amazing miniatures um, that I'm not allowed to talk about uh, that are coming in the next wave. want to say uh, hi to everyone as usual. We are in the chat. If you have questions, comments, inquiries, thoughts, techniques, anything you want to share, please uh, sound off in the chat and we will go uh, and take care of them and chat along with you. Again, we are live. So I want to say hi to Mikey. I want to say hi to Alicides. Uh, these tutorials are awesome. I'm learning a lot. You're very welcome. Uh, DC Lasser says, Wood Mug arrived last week. That's awesome. Uh, Wood Mug, he, he's talking about the adventure uh, boxes that we have, our monthly adventure boxes. And you can check those out, of course, at realmsmith.tv and subscribe there. If you use the promo code, Adventure awaits. You can get $20 off your first box, uh, so you can check that out. Also, uh, if you like what you see and you want to know about these as we move forward, uh, follow us on Twitch. We are live every single Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and then uh, on Facebook as well, we are live right now uh, on our channel at Realmsmith TV. Uh, you can also follow us on Instagram at Realmsmith TV and on YouTube because we post all of the VODs. Um, so you can follow these afterwards. They're all up on YouTube now. I think uh, Tortle is going up tonight, uh, hopefully, and then this one will go up after that, um, as well as the Brass Dragon. So we're just catching up on the last couple weeks, but we have a ton up there, so check that out. Subscribe and like and all of that fun stuff so we can keep you posted on the new videos that we release. All right. Hey, Naroon. Nice to see you, too. Let's get right into tools here, folks. Of course, uh, we are going nuts tonight. I know you think I'm crazy. We are doing all four elementals tonight in a two-hour span. That will be the earth elemental, the air elemental, the fire, and the water. Of course, we're using Vallejo brushes, a zero, a one, and a two, and a dry brush, as well as a larger brush for some, brush, uh, for some base coating because they are larger miniatures. Uh, some water to uh, dilute your paint as well as wash off your brushes, paper towel for dry brushing and, and uh, cleaning your brush as well as a paint palette for mixing. Now our paint scheme tonight, not too many. For four miniatures we're only using 13 paints. Uh, for the water elemental we're going to use a mix of green ink and blue ink, much like we did in our Kraken tutorial. 
and then we're going to use snow at the edge of the for a wave effect. Uh, blue wash and pale gray wash and dead white is going to be used for the air elemental. Red ink, orange fire, and bloody red for the fire elemental, and then of course for the earth elemental, finally we're using a base of heavy brown building up from there with khaki, stonewall gray, and then a wash of umber gray. All right, here it is, the gauntlet of elementals. We have the air, the earth, the fire, and the water. We're going to try and get them all done in the next two hours. Um, keep your fingers crossed, and let's hope we can make that happen. I think, I think we can. I think we can get through this. Um, also, uh, the Monster's Manual has all this awesome secondary lighting. Uh, on some of these uh, miniatures, oh, sorry, some of these illustrations, you can see that they're um, an object source lighting, even on the cloud uh, and stuff. We aren't going to necessarily get into that. These are kind of basic techniques, um, but uh, and I wish we could. We're just going to follow the base color scheme of all of these from the Monster Manual and get them all done tonight. Um, where should we start, folks? Let's see. I think we're going to start. We're going to do the earth last because we want to batch coat the base on the fire and the air, which also have kind of stone bases as well. <laughs> We're getting a blue tinge from my cool blue lighting. Woo! But you can see these awesome clear effects on some of these miniatures are accentuated by that blue light behind it. Really cool. Um, all right, let us start on fire. That's where I'm going to start because I'm in a fiery mood today on a Sunday. Um, the air elemental, I'm using washes instead of inks on that, mostly because it's a bit more opaque. It's supposed to be kind of like cloudy, um, and uh, I just want to make sure that we capture that. So starting off, and these inks and washes take a long time to dry, and it reminds me that I have my fan in the other room. Uh, I may have to get that, but we'll see see how the batch painting goes across all of them. We're going to take some yellow ink and put it into our palette here. Now, yellow ink we're going to use as an all-over base coat on this fire elemental. Um, basically, what this is going to do is it's going to create a solid base from which we can build up red. Uh, fire, uh, as you may already obviously know, is typically white hot to yellows in the middle and then it builds to the outside the outer areas with oranges and reds and then eventually blacks um, we're not going to go all the way to black because we want it to feel really hot and we're not doing kind of a magma effect this is a fire elemental not a magma elemental um, so basically we're just taking this yellow ink and we are painting it all over the elemental like so. Uh, we're going to do front and back all the way around. Don't worry about the base because we're going to paint over that after. Um, and inks, I'll show you the, the inks as opposed to washes are designed to uh, tint a surface instead of provide shadow um, like washes do. Inks are also a bit less opaque than washes are. And so if you don't want to cover anything, um, then an ink or, or obscure kind of a clear effect, then my uh, assumption or recommendation always is to use an ink because it's not going to, it's still going to look see-through um, as opposed to a wash, which will mat down your, your, your surface or create a matte kind of finish on your surface as well as... Um, as well as make it a bit more opaque. So, and inks shouldn't do that. But that's what we did there. So, that is the yellow all over our wonderful fire elemental. We are going to let that dry. The beauty of batch painting and painting all of these at the same time is we can move on to the next one right away. Now, these inks really uh, get onto your brush. So, we want to make sure that we get most of that off there. I'm going to leave the air element a little later because that's going to be the more difficult one. I'm actually testing for the first time ever this pale gray uh, wash that we have from Vallejo. Uh, it's kind of an interesting wash. It goes on gray into the into the recesses. So instead of a dark color, it's a bit of a mid-tone. So, but I wanted a cloudy effect, so I think that's going to be cool. Um, as well as a blue wash on that as well uh, is kind of the plan. You know what? I'm going to do it now. Why not? Jump right in. No fear. Elemental Gauntlet, here we come. Now, as I said, 
uh, washes are going to make your miniature a bit more opaque. It's not going to be as see-through for the clear for the clear effects, but that's okay for this because I actually want it to feel a little cloudy uh, in the recesses here. I want it to be a little bit see-through, but I also want it to feel like a cloud, which is why eventually we will highlight it with a, this is working really nicely actually, we will highlight it with some dead white as well. Question, Phoenix Wolf King says, hey Jason, I have a question. What is your favorite elemental and plane in D&D? My favorite elemental is the fire elemental and my favorite plane is the beast lands. Uh, Tactical Terry says, aren't all the Nolzers miniatures clear under the primer? No, they're not actually. Um, as far as I know, they're not clear. Some of them are, so the ones with clear effects are clear resin under the, uh, or clear plastic under it, but not all of them are, actually. Good question, Terry. Uh, and back to uh, Phoenix Wolf King. My favorite elemental right now, um, we're featuring an earth elemental in an upcoming adventure box. Uh, so I kind of fell in love with the earth elemental recently for that reason, um, just because we were writing him into our adventure. So I'd say right now, the earth elemental, especially because I think it's a really cool I don't want to give any spoilers to our adventure, uh, but the Earth Elemental can do something called Earth Glide, and it can morph in and out of stone. So imagine you're on a mountain and you're fighting an Earth Elemental, and it pop it's popping in and out of the surface of the mountain to attack. It's pretty cool. Anyway, so that is the gray wash. I'm going to cover that blue light behind me here, um, but that actually is really nice. It's gone into all the recesses. It's added a little bit of depth in there, but it hasn't made it completely opaque. You can still see the blue light comes through it, but that actually had a cool, a cool effect here. I'm actually pretty happy with that. It's made it a little gray, uh, but not completely opaque, which is good. Okay, next. Now, as I mentioned before, we're going to use the same technique we used on the Kraken uh, that we painted in a tutorial a couple, a number of episodes ago. That is the earth, not the water. Uh, we are going to start with uh, green at the bottom, I believe we did, and then blue at the top. Uh, I think that's what we did. Um, I should probably know, but it's been a little while. Uh, I am going to grab the Kraken. One second, please. I'll be right back. <laughs> Let me just jump back here into the office and I'm going to grab the one of the tentacles from the crack in here so we can take a look at what we did here as well as my fan which will come in handy. Say hi to Bruno the tavern dog as I pass and I'm back. All right. Okay, so All right, so this is one of the tentacles from the uh, Kraken that we did a number of episodes ago. Um, and actually, I wish I had brought some water effects, because water effects would be really great on this afterwards. I would use a gloss varnish or water effects to make it really kind of glossy and wet looking. So it looks like, yeah, I think I kind of mixed it in, and I did blue near the top and green near the bottom. I think that's what we're going to do. Blue near the top, green near the bottom, mix it all together, blend it nicely. I think that is going to be the method we use here today. All right, so um, we'll get some green ink. Now again, inks are intended to uh, allow a miniature to still be transparent and not opaque. You'll get a little bit of opaqueness, but not a lot, a lot less than washes. So we're going to use a mixture of green and blue here a bit, closer to the bottom. And then we're going to go blue as we go up to the top. Now we may need a couple coats of this, but we will see. Now I'm kind of mixing in and out of this blue and green. Um, I do want that kind of, um, I, I want that effect where it looks like it's transitioning from 
blue to green, but I also don't want it to be a really clean cut line. I want it to be as um, gradual as possible. So then I'm going to dip more into the blue near the top. Now, my ink is pretty, um, this miniature, it is pretty kind of uh, bubbly, I guess, as it goes on. But those bubbles will pop and settle as it dries. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, I, I just wouldn't agitate it too much. I'm doing it over here just so I'm not getting it too much on my monster <laughs> manual here. Um, I always get yelled at for doing that on stream. Um, but basically, I am moving around, moving in and out of the blue and green, mixing it in, taking a bit more green on some of the strokes, or a bit more blue in the other ones, kind of mixing it all in the middle, and just covering the whole thing in a mixture of blues and greens as I go. I am going to come back in here with the, uh, it's, we'll see when it dries, uh, with the crack and I have to do two coats of the inks just because it wasn't quite as, there wasn't quite as much coverage as I'd hoped, but maybe on this one it'll be a little different, I'm trying not to touch the areas I've painted here, but it's hard. Okay, there we go. That is a blue-green elemental wave. Now it is a little hard to see his mouth in here and his face, which I didn't really think about. Um, but that might be okay. Uh, maybe we come in there and we fill that in a bit heavier than the rest uh, with our second with our second coat. So okay, we can let that dry. Base coats are done on the fire, air, and water. Again, um, yes, Easy AK, sorry. I know I said shambling mound. Realized that we actually don't have any shambling mounds in stock here in the studio. I went searching for one. I was like, no, I actually don't have the miniature I need. We will have a shambling mound next month. Um, I apologize for that. So just look out for the uh, schedule, and we'll, we'll, we'll announce when that will be. Um, but uh, for tonight instead, we're doing the Gauntlet of Elementals, um, which is going to be nuts. We're doing all four Elementals within the two-hour span. Uh, this one is drying pretty good. I'm just going in here, and some of the thicker areas that aren't quite drying, I'm just going to dab it up just to speed things along a little bit more. Yeah, Steve Goodlett, sorry, no shambling mound uh, today, but it, I, we will be releasing it in a few weeks after PAX. Uh, because we are doing a lot, uh, we are recording our sessions at PAX uh, for you guys, so we'll play that later. I apologize for that. You know, for all of those that were waiting for the Shambling Mound, I apologize. I will show you the Shambling Mound that I painted um, when we ran our uh, the adventure from our adventure box, because the Shambling Mound appeared in box three of our first adventure, and there it is. That is uh, the Shambling Mound I painted. That is more or less the effect and the uh, kind of the uh, direction that we will be going uh, and the color choices that we'll be using. Uh, I did you add little grass tufts on there as well to um, kind of accentuate the earthy feel, but that is the Shambling Mound. Apologize, folks, that we're not doing it tonight. Uh, we will be doing it soon in a few weeks, so I apologize for that. Um, hey, Weeping Jay, I am doing well. Thanks for asking. Phoenix Wolf King says, what is your favorite class in D&D? &D? Uh, Warlock is yours. Uh, I would say my favorite class, oh man, it's tough. I, I'm a paladin or ranger guy, classically. That's what I kind of grew up uh, playing and loving. Um, but I play a monk now, and I'm loving that. Uh, and I love rogues, too. I mean, there's so many good classes. It's hard to pick a favorite. Okay, this is actually drawing really nicely. Uh, I used a pale pale gray wash on that and it actually turned out okay. All right, so we've base coated those. I don't think I wanna do base coats anymore on that stuff because I'm going to actually now go on to the earth elemental. This is gonna take the longest to base coat because it's a solid base coat. It's the only solid one really, fully solid uh, miniature we're doing. We're using heavy brown from the extra opaque line uh, for the game color uh, 
with Vallejo and basically what these are, these are base paints. They are intended or designed to create a base coat in like one, in one coat. So we're just going to go through with our large brush, take the heavy brown and just get in there. Really work it through, work it in and provide a nice solid base coat from which we can work. Um, the back of the box on the WizKids is kind of a brown color for the pretty uh, saturated brown color that they decided to use for the elemental. Um, in the monster manual, it's kind of a mix of that. It's like a shale sort of light gray and, and with brown undertones. Uh, that's the way that we're going to go. Uh, oh, no. It's all good. Fixed. Um, yeah, we're going to go for the same sort of thing. We're going to use a heavy brown undertone, but then we're going to work up to Stonewall Gray, which is kind of has a brown undertone as well, but it is more of a gray color, and hopefully we'll kind of capture both color palettes with a bit of the warmth and a bit of the cool all in one. So as usual, I'm diluting this just a touch, but this is the heavy brown from Vallejo Game Color Extra Opaque line. Okay. How are we doing for time here? 5.30. Only half an hour. We're doing, we're doing all right, folks. We're doing okay. I chose to do all four in one just because um, inks are quite quick to paint with. If you're if you're painting a spell effect or something or an elemental where you want most of it to be, you know, um, semi-transparent or transparent, uh, then inks are a really quick quick way to do it. And four out of the, or I should say, three out of the four are. Um, Three out of the four are uh, semi-transparent or semi-opaque. <laughs> Mostly semi-transparent because I guess they're closer to transparent than opaque, but whatever. Uh, this is difficult, I will say, to get into the recesses. Uh, these WizKids minis uh, have really deep, deep cuts in their... Um, what I mean by that is their detail is really deep, which is great. It's great for washes. It's great for detail. Uh, and it's great for painting, but uh, you just really need to jam a brush that you don't care too much about um, into those deep recesses to make sure that you get decent coverage for a base coat. Anyone who's joining us uh, that is coming uh, just now, I know D&D &D just tweeted us out. Uh, just so you guys know, uh, we are not doing the Shambling Mound tonight. It was a, a quick change in plans. Um, when we realized we didn't have a Shambling Mound in stock, last minute I thought I had one, um, but I didn't, and it's at our warehouse currently. So um, we are instead doing all four elementals from Wave 11 of the D&D Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures by WizKids. Um, and this is exciting. This is, I, I think it's a wave that is out in stores. I think it just came out. Uh, Ah, yes, box four. <laughs> Steve Steve Goodlett said it was in box four. Steve is one of our subscribers. Thanks, Steve, for the <laughs> reminder. We are going to do the whole body this color with a heavy brown, and then we're also going to do the base on this, and we're also actually going to do the base on all of them with this heavy brown. And, uh, you know, I also wanted to demonstrate kind of batch painting. It's a great way to get through a bunch of miniatures in a short amount of time. If you're painting a bunch of similar uh, miniatures with similar colors, then you can do the same color across multiple miniatures, and then you're saving, uh, you know, paint change time and drying time and things like that, um, which kind of help with getting things done a bit more quickly and get through a large amount of armies. Uh, that's a typical technique that's used, especially with um, like war games that have armies or multiple units. For D&D, it's great when you have, say, a bunch of giant rats that you have to paint um, or, or something like that where you're, you're just batch painting everything. 
you have a multiple bunch of uh, Wanty or lizard folk or something, and they all sh share kind of the same color palette, and you want to get through them fairly quickly, this technique is a great way to do it. So trying to paint the edges while holding it. <laughs> okay, we're gonna put that down for now. That is done. Base coated, earth elemental. Man, look at that sculpt. So stinking cool. So stinking cool. Adjust my light just a bit here because it's not quite bright enough. There. Okay, we're gonna wash that off because we're gonna use a smaller brush. And also, folks, you can use these same techniques in, um, in spell effects. So any miniatures that have like a spell effect um, built into the mini uh, for the WizKid stuff, you can, you can use that same, this same effect for that. It's a great way to do um, any sort of sorcerer or wizard or anything, a druid or bard, anything like that, that would have a spell effect in the miniature uh, using inks like this in this uh, format, even multiple colors is a great technique for getting that done. Uh, let's see. Should have brought a bit of a larger brush for this, but that's okay. I'm gonna grab my Air Elemental, which has a base coat of that gray, that pale gray wash, which you can see. Uh, and I am going to continue to base coat the base with that heavy brown. We have it out already, so instead of wasting paint and switching paint to come back to it later, we're just gonna do it now. We obviously wanna be really careful that we are not getting this heavy brown onto the clear effects that we just base coated because then they'll go opaque and they'll it's kind of counterintuitive or against the purpose of, of having that so um, you know typically maybe you might want to do the bases different colors but the chances of seeing all these elementals in the same place at one time is probably uh, rare or unlikely, so um, unless you're fighting like an elemental mage of some sort, arch mage, and he summons a bunch of different elementals, I guess that's possible. I guess anything's possible in DD, really. But yeah, I'm just going around and base coating all the bases in heavy brown. a nice day here in Toronto today. Contemplating sitting out on the balcony, believe it or not. It's been so cold lately. Speaking of which, where is everybody from? If you guys could sound off, let me know where you're from. That'd be great. Love to hear where viewers are watching from. Question. How is the campaign going because I missed a few streams? Uh, Phoenix Wolf King, uh, you're talking about our Order of Dragon's Bane uh, campaign. We do a D&D live stream every Monday night, uh, tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, uh, which is a change in time for those of you that are watching that watch on a regular basis. Um, 7 o'clock, we play D&D here at this table uh, with uh, my buddies, uh, DM'd by our writer, Brandon Perkins. And uh, it's a good time, and it's going well. We had a huge cliffhanger last game. It was, you know, somebody who we thought was dead came back. Spoiler warning. Um, uh, I won't say who for those of you that are, are, are catching up or, or watching uh, back episodes, but came back and shocked us, and uh, one of our party members had to do something he didn't want to do um, that was like like campaign altering. It's really exciting and really fun, so we're continuing that tomorrow night. So you guys can tune in on Twitch and on YouTube and on Facebook actually we're live on all three platforms for our live streams. Alright so that is a base coated air elemental. Once that's dry we're basically just gonna go in there and we're going to uh, basically going to that's bad. It's really bad. That's the thing folks is if you want to watch the tutorials you gotta put up with dad jokes. We're going to wash it with an umber wash after we've base coated it with a heavy brown. Now for this 
uh, fire elemental. I would have loved to do kind of um, reflected OSL lighting, object source lighting on the base would have been cool. Kind of like a reflected firelight on the stone. If we have time, maybe we can do that if we get through this quicker than anticipated, which would be crazy if we did. If we were early on all four, that'd be nuts. But we're just going to base these uh, almost in the same colors as the elemental. I may not go up to stonewall gray. I might just do heavy brown with an umber wash and then just dry brush with khaki. Call it done. I don't like to put too much attention into my bases because I don't like them taking away attention from the actual from the actual miniature itself. Again, I'm being careful not to paint the clear effects that we just base coated with the yellow ink because we want those to remain transparent and not opaque like the base. We have Jamaica. Oh, I love Jamaica. I'm, I have friends who are all going in January and I'm so jealous. Been there twice. Man. Rice and peas and jerk pork is my jam. Welcome from Jamaica. Italy, uh, Florida. Welcome, everyone. It's really great. Really, really great. Just love the people all over the globe tune in, especially people in time zones where it's really late at night. Or... It's always so, uh, such a blessing. I'm honored folks that you tune in. So thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Now, once I've base coated this, we'll probably move on. We usually do a little bit of story time where we talk about the monsters and people seem to like that. We talk about the stats. I like to, I'm a purist. I've mentioned in, in episodes prior, I like to paint them the same as they appear in the monster manual um, just because um, I like to stay true to the subject matter. You can paint these however you, you see fit or apply your own techniques and your own colors, your own color schemes. Um, but, uh, but I like to stay pretty true to it. So in that, in that same vein, I like to read about all of the stats. Maybe we'll glance at them real quick here in between coats. Okay, so that is a base coated base for the fire elemental. Now, let's wash that off. Let that sit. I'm going to go back to my water elemental here and I'm just going to, did I call that one a water elemental? That was a, that was a fire elemental. I don't know if I said fire or water. I'm just going to go back here and I've noticed that the ink is starting to pool in a lot of the recesses a bit too much. We don't want that because then it's going to obscure detail and it's going to look a little weird uh, and we don't want it to be opaque. So um, I'm just going to go through any areas where it's really pooling and just spread that out. It's, all, it's also going to take a long time to dry if there's massive pools. So I'm just going through and touching up all of these kind of deep, deep, deep recesses that have too much ink in them. Although I do want this deep recess in the mouth so that it's a lot more obviously a mouth. Um, and maybe we'll, maybe we'll even highlight the mouth area with some dead white after as well, just to kind of give it a bit more. Just to give it a bit more um, delineation. Okay, so we've got this really cool yellow fire elemental right now. We're going to continue on with him. Uh, we are going to start with orange. I have to use orange fire. Uh, we're going to start with orange fire. Ohio. Easy AK, were you at Origins? Because we come to Origins every year, and we do Knowles, We did Nolzers Live at Origins last year. I'd love to know if you were there with us. 
Okay, so I'm going to use this massive dry brush, get some orange fire on my on my brush here. Now, again, with dry brushing, the key with dry brushing is that you want to load your brush and then wipe most with paint and then wipe most of it off on a paper towel. Seems counterintuitive, but you basically just want to catch the higher up like the higher up detail of a miniature with the dry brush. Now this color, because it's an opaque paint, is going to make this fire elemental a little bit more opaque. That's okay, because in the end, that's kind of what we're going for and what's going to give us that kind of glowing center to the fire elemental. But you can see already how the orange is picking up the detail, it's bringing out all that detail, in the miniature and it's allowing us to kind of build up the colors that we want so that it looks like fire. Um, I'm also really putting it on on the on the on the on the higher ex highest extremities um, like all the little flames on the shoulders on the fingertips. I make sure you get the front and the back but we're still getting that glow through it. You can still see that yellow through the back of it, but this orange is doing its work, doing the job we want it to. Now you may find with a dry brush that's happening too slow, so you want to do maybe a bit more of a overbrush, which basically means that you are just taking less less paint off your off your brush when you're wiping it off on your paper towel and allowing a bit more to stay on the on the on the brush with these that's okay cuz the streaking isn't going to be as noticeable on these clear minis oh that's too bad easy ak but uh, maybe next time maybe next year we'll be there again we love origins it's one of the regular shows that we do every year and next year you can join us live Paint a miniature with us. It's so much fun. I'm looking so forward to PAX and seeing everyone again. But that's it. It's already starting to look super fiery. This is an all, all over kind of overbrush slash dry brush of this fire elemental. Um, thinking about it now, I should have probably done this overbrush after I did the wash because then, in that case, we could have done that effect that we want on the ground. Um, but it did wipe off some of the brown here because it wasn't quite dry. So I'm just going to go back in and touch up the base a little bit where I was touching it. Okay. Now we're going to let that dry for a bit. And then we'll come back to it. That elemental is going is looking really decent. But you can see here how this is the kind of effect we're looking for. Red hot, like white hot yellow in the middle to an orange to red on the furthest kind of areas on that miniature. That's what we're looking for. Washes. Washes take a long time to dry, so that is the next step. We're going to get umber wash. Umber wash is the typical brown wash, apparently... Bruno, the tavern dog, wants to say hi, everyone. Okay. Now, with this larger brush, we are going to go through. Uh, Stephen Goodlit is asking if we're coming to Gen Con this year. The plan is yes, we are, I think. Don't know what we're going to be doing. Uh, Gen Con obviously being the largest con ever. Um, <laughs> it is... Uh, you know, hard to get into sometimes, and and because you know there's so many people there doing stuff uh, to get a spot. There's waiting lists like crazy, um, but we will be at Gen Con. I don't know what exactly we'll be doing there. Um, probably some classes, uh, but uh, but yeah, I'd love to see you guys at Gen Con. I hope I hope you folks are there next year, and we can and we can see you. That was Stephen Goodlett. One of our awesome subscribers, patient subscribers. Um, we just secured a fulfillment partner um, in, in Canada, and 
Uh, it took way longer than we expected it to, and so uh, we got a little bit behind on boxes for um, existing subscribers, and so they've been waiting a little while while we kind of sorted out all the shipping and fulfillment. But moving forward now, um, any, any new subscribers, instead of waiting, you know, a month and a half to two months to get your box was the was the lead time before we had a fulfillment partner. Now instead, we're looking at like two weeks uh, moving forward. So. Fortunately, the existing subscribers, a couple of them here and there, are still waiting on some boxes that were behind. But we are we're we're moving forward, and sometimes you have to sometimes you have to eat some of that unfortunate kind of you know circumstance in order to get to where you want to get to. And that's kind of been a bit of a, a learning curve and a growth curve for us at, at Realmsmith trying to figure out all the shipping stuff. But we're better for it, and they're doing a really great job helping us catch up, and so we thank everyone for their patience in that, especially Steve. Okay, so this is the issue that I'm having. I have nowhere to hold onto this miniature with, and so every time I touch the base, it's losing paint. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to hold it top and bottom and then just touch up the top of the fist afterwards, um, because right now, I'm having a hard time not um, taking paint off that base. So, but that is the current state. I have used umber wash on that, and that is going to dry hopefully fairly quickly. Let's hope, and then we will come back in and um, do some serious dry brushing. All right. That is the earth elemental. I may have to turn this around. It's getting a little wet here. You want to make sure that you have dry paper towel for dry brushing. Go figure. Put that back on here. Okay, the, the uh, inks on the water elemental are still a little wet. I'm going to leave that aside for a second. And we just did the fire. So we're going to go to the air. Elemental. Now, this pale wash, like I said, has given it a really cool kind of cloudy look. I uh, wasn't too sure how I'd feel about it. I love it. So, we're going to go to blue wash now on that. Awesome, Steve. I'd love to see you at Gen Con. Kelly Preston is asking if we would paint a fire elemental look to look like green flame. And for those of you that watch Acquisitions Inc. Uh, know uh, what that's all about. Uh, I would, sure, why not, right? Whatever, whatever you, whatever you want, whatever works for your campaign and with your story. Um, I'm actually super looking forward to my highlight for packs, or one of them is to uh, watch Acquisitions Incorporated live, um, and so I'm very excited about that. Now. This is a total experiment, folks. I don't know how this is going to go, no promises. But what I'm trying to do is I want to go in and add a little bit of blue into this air elemental. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take blue wash, which is different than the inks, of course. It's used for adding shadow and contrast. And I'm going to paint it into some of the recesses that swirl around this miniature. Um, the hope there is to add some depth and some of that kind of bluish color that we see in the in the source material. I'm putting wash right into the eye sockets so those will become really kind of clear. I don't want to do all of it. I don't want to paint it into all of it. I'm just painting it into like the major creases. So around here, around the neck, and I'm following the contours of the wind. It's like the swirling tornado. Um, down here, there's a deep one here in his chest, off to the side. Like I said, I don't want to go into every recess, but just kind of the major ones here. I'm, I'm trying to, because I do like that cloudy kind of 
the cloudy effect that we have from the pale, I don't want to get rid of that. So I'm just trying to accentuate that with some blue wash. So I'm doing it across here in the back. I'm going to do it up here in this spot under kind of his his head almost look like he's wearing a toque and then there's almost like a musculature to the to the elemental where it looks like he almost kind of has a shoulder so i'm gonna kind of go around there around the bottom bruno the tavern dog just came into the studio hey buddy how's it going you can see. So I'm just doing swirling kind of, and you you, you want to make it look a little random. You don't want it look, to look like stripes, but I'm just trying to add a little bit of depth here. Again, I'm not sure how this is going to go, but I, I you know, the, just the, just the pale to me, the gray was too monotone, and I felt like I needed a bit more depth here, so I'm just going to add it with a wash, especially in the face. I really want that face to be accentuated. I think I'm also actually, instead of using more ink on the water elemental to bring out the face, I'm just going to use some of this wash. Again, base coating, right? Using light colors across multiple miniatures saves time. I love these. These sculpts are so cool. This kind of tornado. Now, does anybody know are these are is Wave Eleven in stores? Do people, do you guys have them in hand? Yet. There. It's progress so far, so. I think it's working. You want to make sure to continue it though. You don't want it to be blotchy, and you don't want it to end abruptly. You want to make sure that it continues, along the path that you have kind of set out. Pour it and add another dot into this uh, into his eye socket so it's dark in there. There, taking some of the paint off the base again here too. It's difficult when you have to hold onto the base in order to paint the miniature. I am diluting slightly. Pigment is fairly strong in these washes, so I want it to be subtle in some areas. There. Okay. There we go. Now, I don't have any on the head. So I'm going to add a little bit on, on the head here and some of it, but I don't want to add too much. I do want the, the head to look like the top of a cloud sort of thing. Okay, I think that's enough. I think I need a little bit more under here. Actually, and I didn't put any on the base here, which is, which is important. So I'm going to add some swirlies onto the base here. Being careful not to get it into onto the base, like the brown part of the base. Don't want that. Just want this every once in a while to accentuate and provide some depth. I think once this is dry, it's going to look cool. At least I hope so. Okay. There we go. Let's put that down for now. I think he's looking good. Uh, actually, I might add a little bit of a watered down wash on the top of the head just because it is looking a little out of place. So I just added a little bit of a watered down wash up there.
I'm also trying to get it on the outskirts of the, the model on the base, but not on the actual brown. Wolfking asks, what is your favorite elemental base monster in D&D? &D? Um, what do you mean by base? Not quite sure. Uh, Kentucky we have. Steve's from Kentucky. Um, elementals. So let's take a look here, folks, at what we're looking at. Challenge five for all of them um, right across the board. They obviously have certain resistances and abilities based on their element. You're so cool. And the water elemental can actually grab a, a creature and potentially drown it, I believe, as it grapples it. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> so crazy. Yeah, we could have added some purple ink to this as well, this air elemental, but we didn't. This time around, I always do that, realize things. Okay, so now I'm going to take some of this blue wash onto this water elemental and add it to the eyes and to the mouth here. Just to kind of accentuate the eyes and the mouth shape. It's hard to see it, but it's there. Okay. I'm going to leave it like that so it actually settles and dries in the in the proper angle. All right, so it is, uh, we have over an hour left. Monsters that use elemental attack or spells. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the elemental that, uh, yeah, I, I think stone. I think I, I mentioned for earth, sorry. I think the earth elemental for me is my, is my favorite, especially because we've been, we've been focusing on that for our, an upcoming box. So again, no spoilers for Steve Goodlett. Okay. These are gonna take a bit to dry. I am now gonna add actually, now that we're still here with the umber wash, I'm actually gonna use the umber wash on the bases for the others. So let's do that. Grab the air elemental I just did. And now I'm gonna take this wash right up to the transparent plastic of the miniature base, but not onto that plastic. This this will add some delineation. You can see how it's really um, kind of separating the miniature from its base. So we don't want to get it on the actual uh, transparent, but we want to get it right up to it. So you're getting it in the recess there. This is actually turning out nice to uh, nicely uh, in separating the miniature from its base. So you can see how that's kind of done that there. Okay, so that is done there. Then we're going to do the same on the fire right before we complete the dry brushing because I do want to get a little bit of glow onto this base from the fire, which is obviously emitting a light. I would love to like modify or like um, enhance. It's not really kit bashing, but I'd love to modify this miniature so that I can get like a tea light or an LED, sorry, at least um, into into the bottom of it so that it glows like one of those tea lights that flicker and get a flickering light in the base of this fire elemental. It'd be so cool. That's what I want it to do. These miniatures are just so cool. Okay. There, that worked. Again, 
wash is doing its job of separating miniature from its base. Wash is still wet on this earth elemental, but you can see that it's also doing its job very effectively. Good. This is this seems to be working nicely. On this, I don't even know if the water elemental needs. You can see the light, the blue light coming through it that I have over there. I kind of did that on purpose just so you could see how light passes through these. But I kind of, I kind of like. I don't think it needs any more ink on here. I think it's good. Okay. Let's see, so that is drying, that is drying, that is drying there. Um, these are all drying. So, actually this is probably the most dry. I can actually probably move on now to adding the wave effect on the top. You can see here, it's kind of got waves on the, on, the, on the uppermost areas of the miniature. So, we're gonna take snow effect. This is an environment effect from Vallejo. We're going to grab some of it out of the pot. And it's pretty clumpy. It just comes out like clumpy snow. Somewhat dry like this. And then, let's see. We basically want it to act like a wave. So on the very edges of the miniature, where it would be like a wave is crashing, we're putting this awesome snow effect. And so it's going to catch right on the edges of these areas, like so, like a wave is cresting, basically. I love this effect. It worked really well on the, on the Kraken. And so I wanted to use it here too. And when it dries, it dries really, really hard and solid. But you can see, looks like a wave from the back. Nope, elemental folks. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna do it everywhere where it's almost, where it's cresting if that makes sense. So anywhere where the wave is kind of about to turn over and crash down, that's where it's kind of, kind of, gonna be. Oh, that was a lot. There we go. You just got to kind of work it around. I put it on and then I move it into the, the position that I want. Like that. And then here they're cresting as well, kind of on the back. So I'm going to a little bit on the back here. But again, only on the highest areas where it looks like it would be the tip of the wave. So the crest of the wave. Like that. Along the back here as well. There, just a little on the back here. Because this elemental is about to Crash down on an unknowing party of adventurers. And that's it. Super subtle. But again, looks like a wave is crashing over. I like that. I don't know if I want to, maybe I want to add a little bit to the jaw, the bottom lip. No, I don't think I do. Oh, uh, actually, that, that works. I may actually do a bit of a of a dry brush for that, but anyways. I love that. That's one of my favorites so far. But you can see how on the ten on the uh Kraken bases this stuff gets so hard afterwards. It looks really cool. Right. 
Make sure you close this really well so it doesn't dry up after you've used it. And wash it out of your brushes and make sure it doesn't kind of stick into your brushes. The water elemental looks like a tidal wave. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? That was uh, Wolf King. It does kind of look like a tidal wave. I like that idea. It looks ominous that way. So, one down, almost, ish. Actually, why not? While I'm at it, why don't we dry brush the air elemental and have that one almost done as well? Uh, the water elemental does have a, a black round base. Uh, actually, I do like. I actually put a little bit of wave on the bottom lip of his face, and I kind of, kind of don't mind that at all. Actually, that turned out. Kind of a happy accident, that one. Okay, so get some dead white onto my dry brush. This is Vallejo dead white game color. And I'm just going to dry brush a little bit on the bottom lip and onto the eyes, just so it sticks out a bit more. And you can see how it's, you know what, I might do it a little bit on here too. Just leading up to the, to the snow here. Actually, that makes it look way cool. Just a bit more gradual effect. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Now you can kind of see the face in there a bit better. Actually, it looks like a face. Cool. So cool. All right. Um, now, with the air elemental, now the wash isn't dry in the face. So I got to be careful in the eyes because I want to make sure that they stay. And the wash is actually not dry in some of the recesses, too. So I'm actually just going to wash my brush for a sec, not let it dry on there, put it down, and then I'm going to use my trusty fan. And then dry brushing this air elemental, I think, is really going to finish it up nicely. All right, let's take a look here at some of the stats. Air elemental. It, the special attacks for me are the coolest. So we've got the slam attack. So it makes two slam attacks. Um, melee weapon attack. Uh, so it's slam. It does 2d8 plus 5 damage. Bludgeoning damage. That's no joke. Uh, damage wise. Uh, and each creature in the... Uh, and then does whirlwind charge. Which... Uh, World, whirlwind, sorry, which recharges on four to six. Each creature in the elemental space must make a DC 13 strength saving throw. On failure, a target takes 3d8 plus two bludgeoning damage. Wow. And is flung up to 20 feet away from the elemental in a random direction and knocked prone. If thrown, target strikes an object such as a wall or floor, takes additional damage. Jeez. So that's an air elemental. So basically it's like a gust of wind that hits the character hard. Okay, so this is mostly dry. I'm confident enough to go ahead and do some dry brushing here. Uh, again, I want this to look a bit like a cloud. That's kind of the intention here. Okay, here we go. Start off light and build it up. So I'm doing a light dry brush. Not sure why that's happening. I got some snow in the in the brush here. Okay. Now, see what happened here is I uh, had too much paint on the brush, and so it started to streak. And you're going to get that sometimes on these. Uh, my brush is just too wet. I think is the problem. That's part of it. The other part is is that there isn't a lot of kind of surface tension, if that makes sense, on these on these uh, clear. There we go. That's better. Clear effects minis. So. 
but we want it to look a little cloudy. We want to bring out the features in the face. And this will help to kind of blend in that gray wash we used and the blue wash. Now we could have not maybe not used that pale gray if we didn't want to. We could have just gone directly from a blue wash all over to white. But I think that the mix of the pale pale gray wash and the blue wash is actually giving it a cool random sort of pattern. I think. I like that a lot. And still, you can see if I place it in front of the light, it still is semi opaque and transparent. So you're still getting light that shines through it, which you want, obviously, with an air elemental. Clouds aren't kind of, they don't have to be fully opaque, but it's not really a cloud as much, it's more air elemental, but in the source material, it looks like a cloud. It's hard to kind of do air, so. There we go. That might be it, folks. That might be good for air. Uh, except for the base. I do need to dry brush the detail on the base. So, but looking good. There we go. That looks cool. That worked out. Very cool. All right. Um, we'll let that base dry a little bit more before we base coat it. Um, this guy's still wet in the recesses. It takes a long time for this uh, these washes to dry. Usually you want to walk away for 20, 30 minutes between washes. Let them dry thoroughly. You definitely don't want to dry brush over a wet wash uh, or you're going to get it pulling and it's just going to make a mess. I do it sometimes on the show just because of time and the interest of time, but all right, Earth Elemental, Earth Glide is its special uh, ability. The um, elemental can burrow through non-magical, unworked earth and stone. Love that. Um, while doing so, the elemental doesn't disturb the material. Like I said, it's so cool. I imagine as it's fighting, it kind of morphs into the stone, then moves under the the adventures and comes up on the other side. Such a cool visual and cool uh, tactic. It's also Siege Monster. The elemental deals double damage to objects and structures, which is cool for, you know, if, you, if, you're, if it's attacking a town or a city wall or something like that. Yeah, that's probably good enough there. Um, and I'm actually going to do a little bit of drawing here on the base of this fire elemental as well while we read a bit more. Then we have, um, I need to get, this, this used to be a quiet fan, but I've used it a lot. So then it does a multi-attack, it does a multi-slam attack, 2d8, 2d8 plus 5 damage, bludgeoning damage, as you would imagine. And they have all kinds of resistances and, and vulnerabilities, of course. And the fire elemental, uh, fire form, the elemental can move through a space as narrow as one inch wide without squeezing. A creature that touches the elemental or hits it with a melee attack within five feet of it takes 1d10 fire damage. In addition, the elemental can enter a hostile character's space and stop there. The first time it enters a creature's space on a turn, that creature takes 1d10 fire damage and catches fire. So cool. Until someone takes an attack to douse the fire, an action, sorry, to douse the fire. Illumination, the elemental sheds bright light in a 30-foot radius, of course. Uh, and then water susceptibility. For every five feet, the elemental moves in water, or for every gallon of water splash on it, it takes one cold damage. All things you would expect from a fire elemental for sure. Okay, that is done. Nice. Man, these fans come in handy. Uh, its actions, the elemental makes two touch attacks. So it touches uh, plus six on, on to hit. And does 2d6 plus 3 fire damage. And of course it has a chance of igniting. Okay, so first things first. Um, I'm going to do a dry brush now of khaki on all the brown areas across all of the miniatures. 
Khaki is just a lighter game color color than heavy brown. It's our mid-tone highlight here. So we're going to get in here. Again, usually dry brush, load your brush, and then go to town. Too much paint. See that? Way too much paint. Brush is too wet. Try it again. Still too much paint. Brush is too wet. <laughs> Try it again. That's better. You want to go against the grain on this, meaning uh, against the texture. You don't want to go with it with the, the grooves because then you're getting paint into the grooves, and you don't want that. You want the it to be dark, kind of in the base areas. Um, and light on the tips, so you get really cool kind of, man, this is, I think it just brushes too wet. I've just been using it a lot. So, but you can see the dry brush is doing that. Now you can see that I put way too much on some of it, but that's okay. But it'll really start to bring out a lot of the detail as you go across the miniature methodically against the grain, like I said, like on the leg here, it's got some uh, horizontal pieces or, or structures. Um, you want to go opposite direction of the way that it is traveling so that you're basically just catching the highest ends of the miniature as you go across it. And we're going to do that all across. all across the base as well. You ima I imagine it's like morphing out of the stone. There is some like moss, kind of grassy texture on this base, which we can go back after and take some green to, kind of in the front area here, but. I think this khaki is a good, good choice. And this miniature is perfect, of course, for dry brushing. As it has such great texture on it. And this can be used for any sort of rock based. I mean, these techniques also can be used, of course, for terrain or anything like that, but there we go. Cool dry brush right across the earth elemental. Um, and then I'm going to continue that dry brush on the base of the other monster, of the other elementals. But I'm going to stop here. I'm not going to do the additional stonewall gray. And I'm being careful not to dry brush onto the clear effects either, but you're getting a cool stone effect on the bottom. That's what I wanted. And then also on the fire one, but I'm just do I'm just getting this done before I get the dry brushing, the rest of the dry brushing down the fire because I want it to look, I want to add that kind of glowy of glowing effect. Okay, there we go. The base is complete pretty much on those. Um, now, I keep, I have to turn this over a little bit because I am running out of dry paper towel. So I want to really dry this dry brush. All right, so that is pretty dry now. Basically, what we're going to do now is we're going to focus on the bloody red to finish up this fire elemental. Um, I'm going to actually, first, I'm going to take a little bit of orange fire because I didn't do it last time because the, the base wasn't done. I'm just going to take a little bit of orange fire here and dry brush a little bit onto the base. What that's going to do, it's going to give us a little bit of a reflected 
glow from the fire onto the stonework. Obviously the fire elemental will emit light and so we're just getting a little bit of this reflected color onto the base which looks cool. And then I'm not even going to worry about cleaning my brush really after that orange fire before I get into this blood red, bloody red. Bloody red of course is from the game color line. Okay, here we go. Now, this will be the kind of the last highlight, which is weird because it's kind of opposite highlight from for the fire and we're carefully going to paint this. Now, we're being a lot more intentional about where we put this red. I don't want it to obscure the orange or the blue. Doing it mostly on kind of the highest points on the miniature. Focusing on kind of the fingertips so you really see them coming through like that. On the face, so you can see the detail on the face. But this should just be the tips of the fire. And I think this is doing the job nicely. You can do multiple um, layers obviously of dry brushing for this. You could even do a black one uh, off the top. I'm doing a little bit on the base of the red, but not too much. The orange is actually better because it looks lighter. This is a darker color, so it will obscure it. You don't want that. And I think that is the fire elemental done. I would like the the eyes to glow a bit more. If I had like a like a yellow paint, I would um, accentuate. I don't have yellow here. I could maybe use orange fire. I might do that. Just paint it in the recess so that those eyes really look like they're glowing, um, glowing red. Let's see. Grab some of this orange fire that's still left on the palette and paint it right into the socket. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, I would use a moon yellow after that, I think, to give it even more. But the deepest area should feel like they're really glowing. That's not too bad. I might paint a little bit in here as well. Oh, that really got bright for a second. That's cool. Camera's having a hard time deciding what to what to focus on here. But it's doing all kinds of funky funky things, but anyways, that is the fire elemental. And I would maybe do some like I said some black on the on the very tips. Um Maybe a dry brush or some black, just so you get kind of the smoky feeling off it too. But you know, lighting this, drilling a hole in here, putting a tea light somehow under there um, would be incredible for this miniature. Because for me, it looks it looks really cool, but I would love if it uh, if it was a little more white hot in the middle, a little more yellow and white hot in the middle. All right. Um, Air elemental is done, fire elemental is done, water elemental is done. Last to finish off here is the earth. Wow, we are super early, folks. <laughs> We're 40 minutes shy of the two hours I thought it might take to get all these done. That's pretty, that's pretty great. You done good, all right. Now, really need to get the red out of this brush before I use it. And need to make sure it's super dry before I use it as well. I 
because I don't want I don't want it to streak on this on this earth elemental. I want it to go on nicely. Hey Melinda, it's been a long time. Nice to see you. Welcome. Okay, uh, elemental. Let's get this. So I'm using Stonewall Gray, which is a lot more gray uh, than the colors we've been using, but is um, still has a bit of an earthy tone to it. So the reason I'm using Stonewall Gray is because I'm trying to get this kind of shale sort of feel. So I'm going to focus on the highest areas of this um, of this earth elemental, basically imagining where it would, the light would hit the most. So we're going to go on the top here, on all these kind of flanges he has coming off the top. There, face. Now his eyes, he has eyes in here, but in the, in the source material, they're not glowing or anything. They're just kind of deep sockets. So we're going to stay true to that. Face. We're going to grab the knee here. On this side as well, if we can. Hands, knuckles. That's pretty much for the front, I think. I don't think we're going to do much more. We'll grab some of the base as well, obviously, like that. And then on the back, we want to grab the ankles, the buttocks area, around the edge of the base. Don't necessarily want to get under these flanges, but we want to get the elbows and the shoulders like that. getting a lot of shadow here today, folks. Sorry about that. Okay. They are done, folks. We are, we are in an hour and a half. We painted four miniatures, all four of the elementals, nice and easy and quick. And you guys can do absolutely the same from home. It is a new painting record. That's true. Yeah, yeah Mikey says, if, we, if I finish early, we can just grab another mini from the office. That's true. <laughs> I got a ton of minis in here. That is absolutely true. Um, the only thing, though, is that I like to, because of the VODs, we like to kind of keep them to the miniatures that we're working on so that uh, people who are following at home after the fact know exactly what they're getting for each one. So in this episode, we finish the air elemental. We finish the stone, the earth, sorry, elemental. We finish the water elemental, and we finish the fire elemental. We'll take one last look at all of these here, uh, and I'm totally getting paint all over the table I built, which is unfortunate, but comes with the territory, folks. All right, so let's take a look here. We've got air. Again, it would have been cool to get maybe some purple in here to match some of the reflected kind of light, but that is the air elemental. Turned out all right, I think. Still has some light coming through. We have the stone, the earth. I keep calling it stone, earth elemental. Now this one too, you can add some green. I, I could have added like, maybe I would have added some greens in there, um, especially some green around the base here. Uh, I guess I could use a little green ink um, to ink that area. You know what? I might do that real quick. Why not? While I'm here, we have the green ink. Don't really want to get new colors because I want you folks to be able to do this at home with the colors we've listed. But let's see what the green ink does when I add it. And if it's not good, well, that's not bad. It's a little stark, but there. And then we're just going to feather it a bit. And by feathering, I mean just pull, kind of pulling it off to the side. But the ink is actually working. I'm going to use that for all of these little... All this area that kind of looks like moss here. And that's just going to add some color dif differentiation and or delineation in the color. We use delineation a lot in this show. It's a word I use a lot of. But yeah, I'm just kind of like 
and then the edges I'm just kind of stippling around so that it blends. And that looks good actually. All right. Good call. I was like, I don't have any green. Oh, wait a second. I have ink. And inks are good this way. Like I'll often, if I if I'm painting a miniature and I realize, you know what, I don't like the the, the surface color of how that looked, even after after it's done, highlights and everything, then sometimes I throw an ink over it, and it maintains its highlights and then gives me kind of the look that I that I want or that I'm going for. It's cool. I might add a little bit here and there. There you go. When that dries, it should look look cool. There we go. Just so it's not all brown. Gives it a bit more interest there. I don't think he has any of that on his body. I think he's all earth. But there. So that is the earth elemental. Sometimes you folks say you want a final look at it. So I will be also posting photos of all of these on our Instagram page. So you have reference after the fact as well. That is Earth. Then we have Fire. One of my favorites. Uh, again, if I had a darker red, it would have been cool to build that out so that, you know, you have some of the kind of really dark red in there. Um, like if I had my heavy red, maybe, or even a charred brown would work for that. But that is the fire elemental. And then finally, water. I think this might be my favorite. Just this water effect looks so, um, I guess, genuine when you use that snow effect on here with the inks. Looks like a real wave. And a little face in there. That's them. Thank you, folks, for tuning in. Uh, four miniatures in an hour and a half. Not too, less than an hour and a half. Not too bad. So, again, folks, you can do this at home with the colors that I provided. Uh, we will be uploading the VODs. I'm going to try and upload the last three, maybe tonight if possible. Um, so you all have all of the VODs that you want um, and can access, which would be awesome. Uh, again, PAX Unplugged, be sure to uh, come and check us out. Say hi if you're at PAX. Uh, I'd love to be able to greet you guys and paint with you and all of that stuff. So definitely make sure that you head to the exhibit hall at 10 a.m. if you're there to sign up for the class uh, in order to get in because they sell out really super quickly. So you want to make sure that you get in early enough so that uh, you don't miss out. Uh, and then also we have the Realmsmith booth where we'll be doing... Um, demos of our adventure boxes there as well and uh, you can pick up a subscription there as well as Vallejo product that we'll be selling in our booth so be sure to check that out as well. <laughs> Melinda says I know right I know it's been a long time I'm so glad that you're here uh, Melinda. Um, Want to thank our partners of course D&D for hosting us tonight uh, WizKids as well for uh, the incredible minis and then Vallejo for their awesome paints that we use on a regular basis uh, make sure that if you like what you saw tonight, make sure that you follow us on Twitch uh, so you know when we go live. Uh, head over to YouTube. We have all of our VODs in a in a, a playlist there that you can access. I think we're on episode 22, so there's 22 miniatures. No, that's not true. There's 22 episodes because some, some miniatures are multiple episodes, uh, like the Frost Giant and the Kraken. But that said, lots of content there as well as a ton of other content with our live streams. Um, which we're playing tomorrow night, 7 p.m. here Eastern uh, at uh, on Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube. We'll be playing D&D Live with my buddies around this table, uh, which we do every week, and we love so freaking much, and it's so much fun. We had a massive cliffhanger last week, which we are moving on to uh, this week. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. And you can find us on Instagram at RealmSmithTV, and, of course, Facebook as well at RealmSmithTV. You folks have an incredible week. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow night, and then we don't know what we're going to be painting come next Sunday. Um, and then the Sunday after that, we're in PAX. But next Sunday, I will release the schedule this week to find out exactly what that is. Have a good one, guys. You guys have a good night.